In this video, get ready for a profound economic revelation as we turn our attention to none other than the legendary investor and financial guru, Jim Rogers. Listen to his latest insights on the global economy and discover why it's of utmost importance to heed his words. Jim Rogers' wisdom has the potential to be a game changer in your financial journey. History shows that no country stayed on top forever, 100, 200 years at the max, and then they peak and go into decline. So I presume we're no different from anybody else. Uh, that's, but one of the problems with history is people don't learn the lessons of history. You know, we had a president recently who didn't know history. If he did know history, he said he was smarter than history. I know I'm not smarter than history, and history is very clear. No nation and no currency, by the way, because they sometimes go hand in hand, has stayed on top forever. So America is now the largest debtor nation in the history of the world. We have troops in over 100 countries. There are people who would say that we're overextended financially, economically, militarily, and it looks like they might be right. Uh, so yes, no, I worry. It's not a good time to be young in America because what the young people are going to inherit is mind-boggling. Jim Rogers' recent warning about the precarious state of America's finances and the future of the U.S. dollar's dominance carries significant weight. As the debt levels in the United States continue to skyrocket to unprecedented heights, Rogers sounds an alarm bell that demands our attention. He aptly labels the U.S. as the, and I'm quoting, largest debtor nation in the history of the world. And with history as a witness, such a position is never a harbinger of good times. The warnings of bubbles in stocks, bonds, and real estate across multiple countries serve as a stark reminder of the fragility of the global financial system. Rogers, with his esteemed background as George Soros' former business partner, draws from a wealth of experience and insights. His declaration of the impending end of the U.S. dollar's era is notable, citing the historical fact that no currency has maintained dominance for more than a century or so. While de-dollarization appears inevitable, Rogers suggests that the greenback's reign may persist for some years, with the Chinese yuan being the primary contender to challenge its supremacy. However, the yuan's ascent depends on China's ability to deregulate and make it universally accessible. Jim Rogers' warning is a call to action for those attentive to the global economic landscape, underscoring the need for careful consideration and preparation in the face of evolving financial dynamics. 100 years ago, Britain was the richest, most powerful country in the world. There was no number two. 50 years later, they were bankrupt. Literally, the IMF had to fly into Heathrow to bail them out. So it can happen. It has happened. It often happens. And the, the symptoms, the money printing, the debt, etc., have always led to the kind of problems you're talking about. I don't think it'll happen in 2001 or 2021 or even 2022, but it's on the way. And my experience and my observation is that all of this money printing, it has to go somewhere, but it takes a long time to build a bridge or a factory, but it's very easy to go online and you buy as much of anything as you want. And that's what's happening. Everybody has a lot of money in their pocket. There is a lot of money around and it's going into financial assets. Will that last forever? It never has, but you say maybe it will. Maybe it will this time. Uh, history shows that it's very clear. There have certainly been periods when stock markets in various countries have done extremely well, but it didn't make people rich. What really counts is making people a lot of money in an international currency so that you can go and buy a watch or a car or a loaf of bread or whatever it is you want to buy. Uh, Washington says that this is transitory. And you know, if you believe the head of the central bank and the head secretary of the treasury, then you don't have to worry. This, everything is gonna be great. Look out the window, everything is gonna be fantastic. No worries, no worries, no. Jim Rogers' warning of the approaching end to the era of the US dollar carries substantial implications for global finance. Drawing from history, he highlights that no currency has maintained its dominance for more than a century or so, signaling the inevitability of change on the horizon. The Chinese Yuan emerges as the most formidable challenger to the greenback supremacy, but Rogers predicts that the shift won't occur until China undertakes full deregulation and universal accessibility. In an era where international alliances and groupings come and go, 
Rogers dismisses the bricks block as a mere product of someone's imagination. He recognizes the potential within each of the individual BRICS nations, but underscores the fleeting nature of such alliances. His assessment provides valuable context in understanding the dynamics of international cooperation. Rogers' assessment of overvalued assets worldwide is a sobering reminder of the frothy markets across various investment classes. He points to stock markets near all-time highs, bond markets in a bubble due to historically low interest rates, and property markets in a similar precarious state. In contrast, he sees commodities as an undervalued asset class, with sugar and silver still well below their historical peaks. This perspective suggests that there may be untapped potential in agricultural products and metals for savvy investors. Jim Rogers, with his long history of prescient calls, remains steadfast in his warning about the financial landscape. As he continues to sound the alarm on various fronts, his insights serve as valuable guides for those navigating the intricate world of finance. I happen to be of a different view. First of all, the U.S. stock market has gone up, what, 10, 12 years without a serious problem, uh, uh, other than some short disruptions, but nothing serious. That's never happened in American history, and maybe, maybe it is different this time. Janet Yellen says, don't worry, we have solved the problems. We won't have economic problems again. She's got degrees from two Ivy League universities, so maybe she knows what she's talking about. I happen to know she's wrong. Uh, we will have problems again, and when they come, it's going to be horrible. 2008, we had a problem because of too much debt. Since 2008, the debt everywhere has skyrocketed, skyrocketed by gigantic amounts. So it would be my view that the next time we have a problem is going to be the worst in my lifetime, given that the debt is so, I mean, I don't, that may sound like some kind of wild statement, but I look out the window, the debt is there. The debt goes higher every day. I know what it caused in 2008. It's got to be worse next time around. Uh, eventually, of course, we may have, well have hyperinflation. Uh, Britain ended with not hyper like Venezuela, but very serious. And the value of the currency went down 80% against the U.S. dollar over a few decades. That's pretty serious stuff. If yeah. you happen to be a British citizen, I doubt that we will end in hyperinflation quickly. That's usually towards the very, very end of a decline, of a long decline. If Venezuela had been declining for a long time, Zimbabwe was in decline. You know, Zimbabwe at one time was the richest country in the British Empire been a long way down since then. They learned, Mr. Mugabe learned how to ruin the country, and he did. It took him decades, but he totally ruined it, and it ended in wild, wild inflation. Jim Rogers' assessment of the U.S. dollar's future is a stark reminder of the ever-evolving global financial landscape. He suggests that the heydays of the American currency are gradually fading into history. The rise of the Chinese Yuan stands out as the most probable contender to challenge the dollar supremacy, although Rogers highlights a significant obstacle. China's capital controls currently hinder the Yuan from assuming a more dominant position, making it less accessible for global transactions. Rogers' insight is grounded in historical precedent, emphasizing that no currency has maintained its dominance for over a century or so. This perspective underscores the inevitability of change within the world of currencies. While he acknowledges the Yuan's potential, he stresses that China must take further steps to internationalize its currency fully. In his critique of the BRICS alliance, Rogers offers a skeptical view, dismissing it as a mere figment of somebody's imagination. He sees little substance behind the concept and is unconvinced by its expansion plans. This commentary provides valuable context for assessing the credibility and impact of international alliances in the ever-shifting geopolitical landscape. As Rogers continues to scrutinize and forecast economic trends, his observations serve as valuable reference points for those navigating the complexities of global finance. I don't think we're going to have it that quickly uh, in the U.S., even if we're going to rate the way of Britain. Uh, don't panic yet. But it doesn't mean we can't have a serious inflation and a decline of the standard of living and a decline of the value of the currency, and we probably will. History is pretty clear. That's what happens. Uh, Social Security will be paid. You may not be able to buy very much, 
with, with your social security, but you will be paid. I mean, in Russia, they still pay the Soviet retirement obligations, but it doesn't do you much good. So the question is that kind of default, I cannot see that happening in the US. However, the value of the money is certainly going to continue to decline. As I said, the British pound went down 80% against the value of the US dollar, which replaced it as the world's reserve currency. I'm sure that the value of the US dollar is going to continue to decline. Everybody watching this knows that the dollar is not what it used to be. It depends on whether you're buying bread or gasoline or anything. It's not the same and it continues to decline. And they're not on your side, as I told you. They want to keep their jobs. I don't like saying any of this, by the way, <laughs> except for the fact that I'm old. It's good to be old. It's good to be an old American. It's not good to be a young American. Uh, well, I mean, these people don't understand much about the world. and they, All they care about is keeping their job. In their minds, their position is keep my job, keep my job, keep my job. They don't care about your job. They don't care about me or my kids or their jobs. They want to keep their job. And the way they know to keep their job is to print a lot of money, spend a lot of money, and keep interest rates down. They will do their best. But what will happen is eventually the market will say, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We've seen this movie. We know how this ends. And the market will say, we're not going to play your game anymore. Then it gets out of the control of the central bank. And that's when you have serious, serious bear markets. It will be the worst in my lifetime. It's going to be the worst in your lifetime too.